Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 8th JavaScript in the DOM tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about DOM traversal from sibling to sibling. Okay then, so in the last tutorial I showed you how we can traverse the DOM from a child element to a parent element and also from a parent element to its children elements. Now in this tutorial I want to focus on how we can traverse the DOM between sibling elements, that is elements that are on the same level such as these three right here. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to need to reach in and grab a reference to one element. And it's going to be this thing right here, the book list again. So since Meninja, I've already prepared this and we have a reference to that book list now in this constant right here. So I'm going to log a few different things to the console. I'm going to log the next sibling and the previous sibling and a couple of variations of these. So we'll say console.log. And the first thing I'm going to do is the next sibling. So I'm going to say book list next sibling is and then outside of this string i'm going to output the book list and the property name that we need to use is next sibling all right so if we save this now and view it in a browser then we should see in the console that we get this text node right here so this is the next sibling of that element and again this is because we have a line break it's going down to the next line and that line break is this thing right here this text node which is here so if we want to get the next element instead of the next node, we can use something similar. Let's just copy this dude and paste it down below. And this is going to be instead of just next sibling, next element sibling. Like so. So I'll say the next element sibling is. And if we save this and view it in the console, we can see that now we get the form, which is the next element. OK, cool. So that's how we get the next one. And you probably guessed it already to get the previous one. I'm just going to copy and paste these down here. I'm going to say instead of next, it's going to be previous. And then down here, instead of next, it's going to be previous as well. If we can spell it. There we go. And instead of next here, I'm going to say previous. And also down below as well. And then let's view this in the browser, save it, check out the console. And now we can see that the book list previous sibling is this. This is the text node again, because we've gone up a line. And then the previous element is the header, which we can see is correct as well, because we're starting here and the previous one is the header. Cool. So that's how we navigate between different sibling elements. Now I want to get quite tricky here and just show you some of the different things we can do. Um, that are a bit more complex, different more complex queries and changing the HTML, things like that. So I'm going to do one simple example. And what I'm going to do is say book list, first of all. Then I'm going to say previous element sibling, which, if you remember, is going to be the header. So currently we're there on the header. Then what I'm going to do is use the query selector. And we can do this. We can chain them together like this. So we can grab a certain reference and then chain a query selector on top of that. And what that is going to do is search this scope right here, search inside the header, right? So this query selector is going to search inside the header now for a P tag. And we can view that right here. So we're grabbing that P tag. And what we're going to do is add on some HTML. So we can say dot inner HTML is plus equal to and then I'm going to add on a BR tag. Then I'm going to say, oops. Then I'm going to say too cool. If I can type too cool for everyone else. OK, so now if I save this. And check it out in the browser, we can see books for ninjas too cool for everyone else. So we've added in this stuff right here and all we needed to do originally was grab a reference to the book list and then use the previous element sibling property, first of all, to get the header. Then we're using the query selector. So it's querying everything inside the header. We're finding the P. Then we're changing the inner HTML of that. So that's how flexible all these different methods and properties that we have access to in JavaScript really are. So we can do all of the same kind of things that we can do in jQuery really easily, really easily in vanilla JavaScript as well. 